down by 17 at one point there in the first half. And you guys rallied back and trimmed it to seven by halftime. Just looked like a maybe a completely re-energized group in the second half. What uh, just kind of keyed the turnaround there to get you guys a victory? Uh, you know, I, I, obviously, uh, second half pace of play, um, 47 points. And, 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 and then defensively, you know, I thought both halves. I mean, we held them to 34 both halves, which – uh, Missouri is a really good offensive team. There are, you know, to, to think that we outscored them in fast break points is a key statistic because, uh, of their pace of play. Um, you know, and then I thought the 15 offensive rebounds and, and the 17 second, uh, chance points, um, you know, really, really helped us. And then I thought, to be honest with you, you know, we just had too many self-inflicted turnovers. Um, you know, obviously their defense will do that to you, but you know, seven steals is probably right around what they average. I don't, you know, I don't think that, um, but I, we had too many just turnovers on us that we, that we need to clean it up for sure. Uh, but Joe's opinion, you know, really changed uh, our look offensively against that, that particular zone because he flattened it out uh, by being a threat in the corner and then knocking shots down. And then you, you mentioned it there, but you decided to start Joseph over Ricky there to start the second half. And uh, it looks like it worked out on both ends of those for you. Rick, uh, Joseph gave you a spark and then Ricky came in, had a great second half. Do you feel like it did the job that you hoped it would do? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, with with any basketball team, uh, you know, if, if guys are playing large minutes, um, you know, you can't take that for granted. And somebody's got to be there to – I don't want to, I don't know what word to use. The first word that comes to my mind is there's, there's a threat to, for somebody to come in and, and take your minutes. Um, I'm sure there's a better word than that, but I can't find it right now. Um, yeah, that was a decision I wanted to go with. It was easy. I walked into the locker room and, and made the decision without um, discussing it with anyone. Um I liked how Joseph was playing. I thought he defensively, you know, he walled up and and did a really good job. And and uh, you know, I I looked at that plus minus at halftime, and and you guys can look at a halftime sheet and and look at the plus minus as well. And and um, you know, it was and it was great for both guys. You know, it was great for Ricky too to uh, to see the team come out and play good in the second half. And then you know, we don't win the game without Ricky's second half isolations at the top of the key. I guess mo motivation might be a good word. You That's a good one. You can motivation. use that, Bob, instead of the other word. Everybody <laughs> no, I don't care. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Put in parentheses, uh, Bob Holt. Yeah, you, you, you guys are down 17. I know you've, you've been a second-half team. And actually, it started – you closed the, the first half on a 7-0 run. So, and Joseph hit that big three. But um, what's, what's the thinking on the bench when you're down 17? And, and what was the key, do you think, to – to coming back like that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't have the stats in front of me from the first half, but the free throws attempt that I thought was important to have a little bit more attack, but we did a good job against their zone of running our five man into random pick and rolls. Um, and again, just, just the pace of play. I mean, I think you have a decision to make with Missouri. Do you want to, do you want to run or do you want to, or do you want to play a tempo game? And we wanted to, uh, to obviously uh, try to score in transition as much as we could. And um, then you have another decision. You have a dilemma because they're a great fa fast break transition team. Do you hit the offensive glass or do you get back? So those two decisions are two decisions that you have to make. Um, and we obviously decided to try to crash the offensive glass and not send two or three back. We, we sent four, sometimes five to the offensive glass and, and they're a good, they do a great job of sometimes leaking out um, and getting transition baskets. But, um, you know, I thought we had some really, some really good individual defensive performances. I thought, um, you know, Devo Davis did a, did a phenomenal job uh, defensively. And I thought that, um, you know, the, the combination of Kamani Johnson, as well as Makai Mitchell did a, did an excellent job uh, on Kobe Brown, uh, not giving up a three point attempt uh, and only allowing seven field goals attempted um, against a guy that has had scored 61 points in the last two games against two ranked teams. And and then, um, you know, Devo, I know he had some kind of crazy passes that probably 
you didn't like, but he did have 10 points, five boards, five assists. What do you think his all around game? You mentioned his defense. Just yeah. Now. I thought his all around great game was phenomenal. Cause obviously uh, Hodge uh, number five is a, you know, you look at his, his scoring numbers and, and what he's done thus far. Uh, you know, I thought Devo did a great, great job of, of, you know, containing one of their and one of the league's you know best scores and then obviously his rebounds his assists all that um i thought he was phenomenal that's why i don't know what he played 37 minutes opinion hasn't played a ton of minutes this year but did you have an idea coming in that he might be a significant player for you or did it, was it just kind of like the flow of the game with him playing 27 minutes tonight no we we felt uh hutch that or i felt that that we were going to get zoned tonight. Um, and so I felt that he would, you know, if in fact the first unit struggled, uh, that he was going to be an option that we were going to have to look at. Um, and then on the other end, they're a team that will try to find a matchup that they like and isolate you. And I thought he did a really good job defensively. And, I, you know, probably the most surprising thing of Joseph's play when he's gotten minutes He's done a pretty good job of 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 defending um, guys, you know. And I thought I thought he did that again tonight. You know, there's there's one blow by, but but we had a lot of guys that that got blown by once, you know. So I thought he did a phenomenal job. I mean, he shoots the ball with confidence every day. Um, you know, when you watch your team spot shoot, um, I mean, he's an elite shooter. And the way their zone is where they have so many guys uh, above the foul line, uh, that deep corner was a, was a sweet spot, we felt, for somebody. And then also, I mean, even against LSU, y'all were a much better offensive team in the second half. What do you think is contributing to the slow starts? And then also, what's it say about your young team that y'all are able to kind of get things going in the second half? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, – I mean, it's, 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 it's all coaches jobs, whether it's football, whether it's basketball, you know, you've got to try to make an adjustment in the second half. And, and, um, you know, you hope your team can, if you do something on the fly, um, maybe changing, not running our zone offense. Like we did the first half, we went to what we call our open offense. Um, and we went to middle pick and rolls and, and then being able to adjust on the fly um, I thought helped us tonight. And, you know, I, you do get worried about a, a young team being able to do that, but Anthony is so smart and Devo has been around and Kamani. And so those three guys really do a good job of, Hey, this is what we're supposed to do. Now we got to go do it. Yeah, and he made significant strides with the minus nine from what I mean, huh? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Minus 18 is a lot. Um, but he was absolutely vital scoring the basketball in the second half. And um, you know, he struggled at LSU for the for the you know, for for the for the most part, the whole game offensively. And um you know, struggled in the first half. And so, you know, we decided to, to make that change. But I told him in the locker room, really proud of not starting. And then when he got inserted into the game, not letting it discombobulate his brain or his uh, confidence. Because he looked like a guy that was pretty confident regardless of what I did. We've talked about the offensive changes and improvements, but as far as defensively, you managed to limit their three-point shooting a lot more in the second half than in the first. Just what was the difference there? Uh, great, great question. I mean, to start the game off, I made a decision that we were going to have a goalie, um, and their first basket was on me. Um, you know, we felt like, uh, you know, DeGray was a guy that that the more shot attempts he would take, the, the less – Brown and and uh, and Hodge would take quite frankly. Um, he hit a three. That's on me. Um, there was another three hit off off of a guy that we were kind of sagging off. So sometimes you make a decision and and um, you know, I mean, Gray was a guy that that we wanted 
Kai to, to protect the rim and help on dribble drives. Uh, probably would do it again too. You know, I mean, it's, he only played six minutes. Um, but that's probably why they had a couple. That's on me. Clean open shots. And then Kamani had eight rebounds, three of them on offense, and some real hustle plays. Just thoughts overall on his night. Just uh, the ultimate loose ball getter, the ultimate. You know, some guys rebound in their area, and uh, Kamani's an excellent range rebounder. Excellent. Um, and he's physical. He's kind of bouncing around, bouncing off bodies, and, and uh, you know, he's got an incredible nose for the ball. Yeah, I mean, I told the team, I mean, I don't know how many days we had, seven days, six days. I mean, I told the team, like, it's a must win. I mean, I don't like to tell people that, but I mean, quite frankly, it was a must win tonight for us. And uh, maybe that had an effect of, of how we played the first half, you know, because I've never told a team this early in the year, but I felt like um, with the toughness of the league that, that this was a game, um, especially because we had a long prep time, um, you know, that's, you know, if you have a long prep time, you, you know, I, I, I hope that we would, you know, play good basketball. And I thought we did defensively. I thought our shoot around, you know, in, in my opinion, shoot around is the most important uh, practice that we had all week, uh, your game day shoot around, because uh, it's your last uh, mental reps that you get. And I thought our guys were locked in defensively. And, and again, maybe I worked or we worked too much defensively this week, but um, Mike Fratello, Chuck Daly, Hubie Brown, the guys that I've worked for, that that shoot arounds vital um and i thought our guys defensively today uh were locked in from a defensive scheme and they understood the importance of of trying to put uh extra emphasis on brown and extra emphasis on hodge just like we did against lsu i thought we did a phenomenal job against uh miller and and uh, williams are two best players so i think when you can when you can make things difficult on star players that, you know, and other people are, are trying to score for an opponent. It, it helps your, your overall defense. Yeah. I mean, it, we missed a front end of a, a front end of a one and one at, at LSU. And, and, uh, you know, you hope that that doesn't carry over to the next game, which obviously it didn't. I mean, for Ricky to go 11 of 13, you know, from the foul line, um, we have felt since we've all gotten together and we do our little perfect free throw at the end of practice, he's, he's one of the guys that's as good as anybody on our team. He shot technicals for us when we've, when we've been in that situation. So, um, his drawing fouls and then his converting is we need that from an offensive standpoint, especially when we struggle. Yeah, I thought he ran really hard, and we talk about not just getting to the corner, especially against a a one three one or a one one three, a, a a zone that's a little bit more stretched out at the top is is not just getting to the corner, but we call it the extreme corner, and and then and then you got to have discipline to stay there if you're not getting the ball, and and that's why even when Joseph did not score tonight, I thought he flattened things out you know, for us from a spacing standpoint, if you don't have good spacing against Missouri, you're, you're, you're not going to give your chance, you know, self a chance to win. Yeah. 
Well, like we've been at Red Shoe and I always took a shot, and I think you guys were at the rest of it. Yeah, I mean, Ricky, other than that LSU game, is, has been a guy that we've relied on to make uh, end of shot clock plays or end of game shots. Um, you know, he's a high field goal attempt player for us. Um, he led us tonight uh, in field goals attempted and and he can create his own shot. And the, you know, the hardest thing in basketball is when the play breaks down. Do you have enough players that can create your own shot? And Ricky is one guy in particular that does a great job of creating his own shot. You always talk about one of your guys that so much freedom offensively. And was that kind of the perfect microcosm of that, where you have Bebo and Ricky to kind of work through some of their trouble? Yeah, I mean, we want our guys to play with great offensive freedom and and to play with great discipline defensively, and that's something we talk about every day. And when we ended shoot around today, I you know I said against a, a team like Missouri that. Uh, will gamble in a team that is a high steel team. You know, there's going to be a lot of points in the game where you just got to play. There's a lot of broken plays and you just got to be a basketball player. And um, I thought, especially in the second half, like I said, we just scrapped our zone offense and we went immediately into our open offense, which is really a, a five man motion type offense that we run against man to man when our plays break down. And I thought we did a good job of in that open offense, finding gaps. And, and then, like I said, running into some ra random uh, 05 or our center running random pick and rolls. Thanks. Thanks.